Okay. Um, what we're talking about now is uh, Belisi and I uh, and Lenny are temporal clauses. What are temporal clauses? Temporal clauses are clauses that specify the time when something happens. So um, there are temporal clauses of clauses like when, when we when we go to school we learn Greek. <laughs> Uh, when we went to school, we learned Greek. Um, when we, while we go to school, we learn Greek. Okay, those are all temporal clauses. After we, we went to school, we learned Greek. That's specifying a different kind of time. Um, or we learn Greek until we go to school. <laughs> mm. Stuff like that. That's about uh, uh, looking forward. In, in, in this part of this Unit 11, what we learn is how to talk about uh, how to make time specifications that are simultaneous to the action of the main sentence um, and those that are prior, okay? So let's do the prior ones first because they're the easiest ones. So temporal clauses that speak of an action that took place in the past. Okay? And I think these are actually the most common of all kinds of temporal clauses. Mm -hmm. So you, you, if you say, uh, when we, when we uh, built our house, um, we uh, we used uh, bricks, okay? Mm -hmm. um, you're talking about something that happened in the past, right? And, and it's a very straightforward thing. Um, it's it's indicative, okay? It's like the natural versus the actual result clauses. What we're talking about, and when we talk about prior action temporal clauses, are things that happened in the past that actually happened. So you just use a word for when. And the words for when in Greek are epe, and one and one. That means when. There's another form of it which has the particle de attached to it, epe de. Okay. And, and there's also the conjunction hate, the third one, or hate, with an accent on the first syllable. Okay. All these words just mean when, and when you're talking about an action that took place in the past, before the current, uh, whatever, whatever your time frame is, um, you just use the indicative, okay? So when we did something, we, 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 did, we did something else, um, it's just the plain indicative. The temporal clauses become more interesting and more complex when they're talking about things happening simultaneously, which they adds an element of, of uncertainty to them, okay? And that's what gets us involved in modal syntax. So when you say, when we build houses, we use bricks, okay, as opposed to when we built our house, we used bricks, okay. When we say, when we use houses, we use bricks, we're making a general statement, okay. Right. We're not talking necessarily about something that actually happened, okay. We're talking about a general rule, and there may be exceptions and all kinds of stuff like that. So when we use houses, we use bricks, is exactly like if he builds houses, he uses bricks. That is, it's the present general condition. So, what do you do? You use the same kind of syntax as you use for a present general condition. You use um, on and the subjunctive in the when clause, and the present indicative in the then clause. Okay? <laughs> when we build houses, it's going to be epe plus on, or epe de plus on, or hotte plus on. Hotte plus on can be written hot on. Okay, there's one word. Um, yeah. Yep. Um, and, and, and you use the present indicative and the main sentence, okay? And then you use on in the subjunctive of the when clause and the present indicative. So if you can have a present general um, uh, temporal clause, you can also have a past general uh, temporal clause. Whenever we built houses, we used bricks, okay? Again, it's a generalizing thing. It's not about a specific definite act that, act that took for place in the past. Lucy, you're brought me out of the picture. Hi. <laughs> so, Sitting away on my busy chair. Okay. <laughs> so generalizing in the past gives us a, a past general condition. Whenever we built houses, we, 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 we used bricks. So we're going to use epe with the optative. Remember, that this is the way past generals work. A on plus the subjunctive and the present indicative for the present general. A plus the optative, okay, in the when clause, a pay or a pay day or a plus the optative, and then the imperfect in the then clause, okay? 
whenever we build houses, we use to use bricks effectively. Okay, um, so there's also, if you think about it, um, a third example that you can do in English, which has the same amount of indefinite. It's the future, more vivid type of tempo clause. When he builds houses, when he builds our house, he will use bricks. Okay, there, you're not talking about uh, a specific thing either. We are hoping that it'll happen. Okay, mm -hmm. but it, so it's it's looking forward. Okay, so when he builds houses, he will use brick. You're gonna you're gonna use the conditional syntax of a future more vivid condition, which is again on with a subjunctive, same as the present general. Okay, All right. Right. On plus the subjunctive in the when clause. Okay. That's the when, when he builds our house, he will use bricks. And then in the main sentence, a future. Okay. So to sum up, we've got past definite temporal clauses, which just use the indicative. When he built the house, he used bricks. Okay. It's a fact that happened. Um, we've got three kinds of syntax in simultaneous and future uh, temporal clauses that use the syntax of conditional sentences, present and past general, and future more vivid. So present general is, if he builds houses, he uses bricks. Past general is, if he built houses, he used bricks. And future more vivid is, if he builds our house, he will use bricks. Okay? Mm -hmm. so it's not general, but it's about something we're looking forward, you know, looking forward to, and it's still hasn't, not sure it's happening. That's it.